Hello, this is a video on how to play the board game Monopoly. And, uh, and so what you'll need to play Monopoly is you'll need a Monopoly board, either physically or there are ways through which you can play the game digitally as well. Uh, there are many different versions of Monopoly. There's Monopoly Deal, um, there's many other variations as well. Uh, but we are going to be going over the rules for classic Monopoly. And so just a little bit about the history of Monopoly, uh, just as a fun fact. Monopoly was created by someone um, based on the economic concept of a monopoly. Um, and a monopoly is basically when a single company um, owns, I guess, all of one product, right? So without getting too much into, into, I guess, a complicated concept here, especially it's basically a single person or a single group of people own all of everything of, a, I guess, a single object. Uh, and so it was created to actually teach kids about, uh, I guess, the negatives of a monopoly. Um, and it was supposed to be an educational tool. Um, it was actually uh, originally uh, developed in the 1900s. Uh, but I guess that's just a little bit of basic history about the game. Let us actually get into the game. And so on the Monopoly board, there are 40 spaces. Okay, And so uh, if you look here, you'll be able to see that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 spaces and then if we count from here we have 10 and from here we have another 10 and then from here we have another 10 as well right so that's a total of 40 spaces um, in the four corners of the board are the space where you can sort of i guess they're sort of special spaces um the most common one being go Right? This is where you start, um, and every time you pass go, you receive $200 more to your current balance. Uh, in jail, if you just walk on it normally, then there's no penalty. Right, You're in the just visiting section, but let's say you land on a chance or a community chest in which you have to draw a card from the middle. In that scenario, if you draw a go to jail, then you have to go into jail. Or if you land on this corner directly opposite, uh, that will also send you directly to jail. Note that a key aspect is that when you get sent to jail, you go directly to jail, meaning you do not cross go and then go to jail. So anytime you go to jail, you will forfeit your ability to, um, I guess, collect $200 from passing go. And so going to jail isn't something you want to do in the early stages of the game. But um, although we are getting into a bit of an advanced strategy here, let's say we're in the advanced portions of the game and there are, um, I guess it's called different in different versions, hotels and I believe apartments and houses and hotels, sorry. So if you have houses and hotels everywhere on the board, landing on any one of them, would require you to pay a large portion of your rent a large portion of rent to the person who owns the property. And so in those scenarios, you would want to go to jail, right? Because going to jail means you don't have to pay anybody rent and you can stay in jail for multiple turns. And we'll get into that. But in terms of more basic rules, um, in terms of setting up the game, uh, you'll put the board in position, right? Uh, we'll also explain that you have uh, 22 properties. So those are the places on the board that have colors above them, right? And you have four railway stations. These four rail railway stations are in the middle of each side of the board, on each edge of the board. You have the electric company and waterworks. So here's the electric company and over there, it's hard to see is waterworks. These are your two utility stations. You have two tax stations. So that's income tax and luxury tasks and community chests, sorry, community chests and chances. 
And so when I refer to railway station or utility or community chest or tax, hopefully now you know which part of the board I am referring to. In terms of setting the game up, to prepare for the game, right, you'll have your board. You'll want to place all of your chance cards and community chest cards on the board. And so once you place all your chance cards and community chess cards on the board, uh, let's just talk about what they are. And so the chance and community chess cards are cards that can help players earn money or lose money by taking the player to a land that is owned by someone else who collects rent or by taking the player to a land that is, is not currently owned by anyone, thereby prompting the player to buy the land. Once the board is set up, each player picks a token, a playing piece. In Classic Monopoly, um, there will usually be a battleship, a thimble, a shoe, an iron, a top hat, a Scottish dog, a wheelbarrow, a horse, and a rider, and a cannon. Okay, there's, this is once again depending on the edition of the game. Here you can see that I have picked the top hat, and my opponent here has picked the shoe. Then, um, a certain player hands out money, and each player gets the same amount to start off with. And so, each player will start off with $1,500. Okay, so that is two $500 bills, four $100 bills, one $50 bill, one $20 bill, one $10 bill, three five dollar bills and five one dollar bills and that if you sum that all up that becomes fifteen hundred dollars one player is usually designated as the banker since we're digital here um, it's automatically going to track everything for us but if you are playing on a physical board then you'll need to have one player who puts money into the bank hands out money to players and does those responsibilities the bank has the money, right? So the spare bills, uh, or if you're playing with, I guess, a credit card edition, and then a spare credit card. Um, it has the title, deal title deed cards, right? And so, so the title deed card is what signifies ownership of a property and the houses and hotels. The bank gives a player 200 every time he passes go, and also allows the player to, um, I guess, collect money if they draw a chance card that says pick up $100, right? Or simply uh, the bank takes money from the player when they buy out land, houses, hotels, and loans money when a mortgage is played. Um, the bank also collects fines, loans and interest and taxes. So that was quite wordy and I do apologize, but let us get into the objective of the game. The objective of the game is to own as much land and to be the richest person. You win the game when you are the last person left in the game, meaning all of your opponents have bankrupted. The rules, which can be found in any Monopoly box, are similar no matter wh what edition you're playing, provided you're playing with a standard board. Each player rolls the dice to see who goes first. The person who rolls the largest number goes first. Everyone starts on the space that says go. Whenever you land on land that no one owns, you can buy it from the bank. If you do not want to buy it, the banker must sell it at an auction. So let's say I'm going first. No property has been bought yet. Meaning if I land on a property, let's say um, this light blue right here, or sorry, this uh, <laughs> brown right here, we'll go with this brown. Nobody owns it. Therefore, I have the option to buy it or I could pass on buying it but then it will be auctioned to the highest bidder. Note that some people choose not to play with this auction rule, meaning that if a player passes on a property, it is simply the next player's turn. However, in Classic Monopoly, this is usually the default, but once again, you can customize the rules to your liking to make the game more fun. All the prices for the land are on the board below each uh, I guess part of the board and so if it's easier to see hopefully now it's easier to see um, that $60 $60 100 or sorry 200 
that should be or is that I can't even read that I apologize um, but essentially all the prices are listed under each property once you own the land players must pay a rent if they are waiting on your land and so let's say I bought this brown here that we were speaking about earlier and let's say player two rolled and he rolled a three one two three Player two would also land on that brown and would have to pay me rent. The rent that you must pay is specified on the title deed card. So here you can see a title deed card right there. That is for the brown property. And so the rent is pay specified on there depending on the current level of ownership of the player. If you land on a chance or community chess card, you must do what it says. For example, go to jail, right? You go to jail. It says advance to go, you advance to go. Now, if you roll doubles, so that's the same roll on both dice, right? Monopoly is played with two dice. So let's say you roll a two and a two. You get to roll again. And so this is beneficial, but if you roll three doubles three times in a row, you must go to jail. So you roll doubles once, you roll doubles twice, but if you roll it a third time, you go to jail. And so the maximum number of turns a player can get without going to jail is three. They roll initially, that's their first turn. They roll doubles once, that is their second turn. And they roll doubles again, that is their third turn. If they roll doubles one more time, they would go to jail. Right? So the maximum use of turns you can make using doubles is three turns. When you pass go, you collect 200 from the bank. Free parking is an area that is free to be in. Okay, and so if you land in the area, you do not have to worry about paying for anything. Yeah, so what's the point of free parking? Um, well, classically, it's an area that's just useless. Okay, offers nothing to the game. Um, obviously, in later stages of the game, where the board is filled up with hotels, you don't want to pay high rent. And so free parking is very useful. However, um, over time, players have realized that when you pay taxes right so let's say you land on this income tax when you pay taxes or fines you pay that directly to the bank and so that's money that leaves the game okay and over time each player loses more and more money and that's less money coming into the board uh, and so i mean each player gains 200 from go right but some players like having more money in the game and so if you just keep free parking as it is the amount of money in the game would stay relatively normal. But some players like to make a rule that whoever lands on free parking gets to collect all the money that was currently that is currently on the board, meaning all the money that has currently been paid in fines, taxes, etc. So that's totally up to you. Personally, I don't recommend it simply because as you pass go, you collect 200. And so um, as you pass go, you're pumping money into the game. And if you land on free parking and you include that rule where you collect the money that has been paid in terms of fines, then there's no money leaving the board ever. Okay? And so over time, players can accumulate a ridiculous amount of money. And so this sometimes does make it a bit boring because it makes it harder for players to bankrupt. And it will make the game last longer because there's more money available to the players. But that's up to you. I, uh, I do sorry I am I do apologize I am getting a bit descriptive in the descriptions here but I just thought I rather than giving you the basic rules I just, I sort of explain uh, I guess go in depth about them and so there are three ways to get into jail right you land on the space go to jail you pick a chance or community chest card that says go to jail or you roll doubles three times in a row also, there are three ways to get out of jail. You get three turns to roll a double. If you roll a double, you leave. If you do not roll a double in the three turns, you must pay the fine using a get out of jail free card that you can get from the Chancer Community Chest, or you must pay a fine of $50. All right, so um, you don't you want to roll your doubles because otherwise you'll have to be you'll be forced to pay the $50. Uh, to get out of jail. Once you own all of one color, you own the Monopoly. Then you can start building houses. 
Houses make the land more costly, and every time you add a house, the price goes up more. Once there are four houses on each land, you can get a hotel, right? And you can build one hotel on each piece of land. You can sell any land to another player at any cost. But if you have houses or a hotel, you must sell them back to the bank and then sell the land. Okay, so note that players sometimes sell land, right? Maybe if you land on a player's property, you'll, you go bankrupt. You need, you need to sell some of your property in order to try to pay the rent. Then you will do that. But if you have any hotels or houses, you must refund them to the bank at a decreased cost before you can sell that house. Or sell the land, sorry. You can also mortgage land, okay? Um, and so let us actually roll a bit because I am uh, spending a lot of time talking and not enough time playing. So we rolled an 11. And so while we're going, uh, we will sort of just talk. Um, and so you can also uh, mortgage land. That means if you have property, you can find the price of the mortgage on the back of the card. Um, and so mortgaging the land. And so once you can see, I can purchase um, the deed here. And it also shows the rent. It shows the rent if I own all three pinks. And it shows the rent if I put houses and hotels. Right? And it also shows the cost of putting houses and hotels. So the deed cards tell you everything you need to know. And obviously you want to get three of the same color because you can place houses and you can make more money. And so in this regard, I'm... Just to, going to concede my turn. There was nothing more I needed to do. So as you'll see, you'll sort of see my opponent here uh, do certain things on the screen. Well, I am controlling my opponent, actually. And <laughs> so we'll continue going here. Uh, but if you're going to mortgage, you essentially, and we'll actually show it here in the next turn if we can. Uh, but you sell, you basically partially sell the houses back to the bank for a certain dollar value in order to get some temporary money. You can then unmortgage the houses later on to sort of get your land back from the from the bank. And so in this case, I'm not sure if I'll be able to mortgage right now. Um, let's see. No, nope, doesn't seem like I can mortgage here. I just might not be able to mortgage in this version here depending on which one I'm playing, right? Because it is digital, it has its limitations. But generally you can mortgage. Um, and so if you mortgage, then you simply collect some money from the government, but I mean, from the bank, sorry. Uh, but then you have to pay back the mortgage price plus 10% plus to unmortgage. Right, so if a property is mortgaged, uh, and so you can see a community chest where we pay fees here. If a property is mortgaged, you cannot collect any rent on the property, or you cannot um, you can't you can't have houses or hotels, right? You got to sell those back before you mortgage the land. And so bankruptcy bankruptcy is when you don't have enough money to pay rent or pay tax. Basically, when you don't have enough money to do the action that you currently have to do, you are considered bankrupt. If you declare bankruptcy, you are done with the game. And what happens in that situation is the player who made you bankrupt, right? So let's say you landed on a player's property and you were unable to pay the rent and you became bankrupt. The player who made you bankrupt gets all of your property and the remaining money balance you have. Okay. If you went bankrupt to, um, let's say, a fee, right? So there's some chance cards that has, say, pay $100 for every hotel you have. And so if a player has 10 hotels, then the player has to pay $1,000. And so the player might not have $1,000, right? And so in those situations where you go bankrupt to the game board rather than a player, um, all your money goes into the bank and all your deeds and property are available for sale once again. So they go to the bank, nobody has ownership, and once a player lands on them, they can buy them again, right? So it's like having a fresh property. So that's pretty much it. Um,
Um, sorry that this was a bit of a longer video. My first one in a while. Um, but that's pretty much it for how to play Monopoly. If I could play a full game here to demonstrate, that would be the, ideally the best way to do so. Um, but, unfortunately, that is simply way too hard. Um, and that's because Monopoly takes very long. And so if you are going to play Monopoly, make sure you have hours of time available. Because depending if on the number of players you have and the rules you are using, um, the game could go on for hours. Right? I've had Monopoly games um, where we've been unable to finish the game uh, in the day and we had to keep the board there, come back.